Welcome to our online. The concept of covariance and the covariance matrix are sometimes misunderstood. And there's a reason for that, because when we hear the word covariance, and of course many of us are probably already familiar with the term variance, we think there's a strong relationship. And in essence, there is a strong relationship, but yet they have very different meanings. And if we think of them as having the same meaning, then we're going to have a wrong impression of what we mean by the covariance. So what we're going to define in this video, we're going to define what, a co what covariance is. Later on, we'll take a look at the covariance matrix, but we're going to do it in relation to the concept of variance and the concept of correlation. There's actually a very strong relationship between covariance and correlation. And of course, we're dealing with data sets. Now also, when we're dealing with data sets, we could be using the whole data set, the whole population, or we can be using a sample. And later on, we'll show you how there's some subtle differences when we do the two. Now here, we're going to be uh, working with the whole data set. Let's say we have two data sets, X and Y. They each have five elements in each data set. And let's assume that's the entire population. So first of all, what is the variance? Well, we write the variance as S squared. Sometimes we also use sigma squared. Sigma, of course, for the standard deviation. We'll get into that a little bit more later. But the variance, S squared, is simply a measure of how spread out the numbers of a data set are. Are they all bunched up together very close to the average or the mean? Or are they all spread out very a lot? So we can have a small variance or we can have a large variance. And that simply means are the numbers close together or the numbers far apart. How do we calculate the variance? Well, first of all, we need to find the average of the data set. So we add up all the numbers together and divide by how many we have. And in this case, for the x variable, uh, for the x data set, the average is 6. For the y data set, the average is 7 by simply adding them all up and dividing by 5. Now to calculate the variance, what we're going to do is we're going to take each number and take the difference between the number and the average. For example, 2 minus 6, because 6 is the average, and we're going to square that result. So 2 minus 6 squared, that's 4 squared, which is 16. Then we get 4 minus 6, and we square that, that's, two, that's negative 2 squared, that gives us 4. 6 minus 6 squared gives us 0, 8 minus 6 gives us 4, and 10 minus 6, again squared, will give us 16. Add them all together, we get 40, divided by 5, we get 8. So here the variance is 8. What does that really mean, the number 8, instead of 10 or 6 or 20? Well, we simply know that the bigger the number, the larger the variation is in the numbers, the more spread out they are, the smaller number, the closer they are. So we have a general sense of what that means. When we do the same for the variance of y, so we can write s squared, but sometimes we can simply write s sub y squared so that we know we're finding the variance for the y data set. And again, we take each of the five numbers, subtract the average from that, 1 minus 7, square that, 3 minus 7 squared, 8 minus 7 squared. We add all that up, we get 94 divided by five numbers, we get a variance of 18.8, .8, which is much bigger than 8, which means that our second data set, the Y data set, is much more spread out than the X data set. Notice that the smallest number is 2 and the largest number is 10. The difference between those is 8. That just happens to be a coincidence here, it doesn't have to be. Notice here that the smallest number is 1, the largest number is 12, so there's a much more spread and the variance there is 18.8. .8. Notice, of course, that if there's a large difference, if there's a single number, let's say there's a, a, a number instead of 12, it was 50, well, 50 would be very far away from the average. You square that number, you get a very large variance. So a single number that is far away from the average could really give you a large variance in the result when you calculate it. So what do we mean now with the covariance. Well, the covariance deals with comparing two data sets, the X data set compared to the Y data set. And what are we comparing? Well, what we're comparing is that if one is increasing and the other one is increasing, then there's a lot of similarity between the two. They're both increasing. Well, that would give you a large positive 
covariance. But if one data set is increasing while the other data set is decreasing, well, that would give you a large negative covariance. And if there doesn't seem to be any relationship between the two data sets, one may be increasing, the other one may be staying steady at a fairly constant number, then the covariance would be very near zero. There doesn't seem to be any relationship between one data set versus the other data set. So that's what we mean by the covariance. It is a measure of how the trends of the two data sets are related. Do they both increase? Do they both decrease? Does one increase? Does one decrease? Or is there no, apparently no, no relationship between the two data sets? And that will give you a covariance number. And we'll get much more in the detail of how to calculate those and what the positive and negative numbers are and what the numbers close to zero mean. How do you calculate the covariance? Well, we write it like this. C O V with X and Y represent the two, the two data sets. And what we do here is we take the difference between the average and each one of the numbers. So we're going to sum that up. So we take 2 minus the average 6, which is a minus 4, and then we multiply that times the first number of the second data set minus the average of that number. So here we have minus 4, which is the difference between 2 and negative 6, and minus 6, which is the difference between 1 and minus 7. We multiply those together, and in that case, that gives us 24. Here we take the difference between those two, which is negative 2, the difference between those two, which is negative 4, multiply them together, we get 8. The difference between those two is 0. The difference between these two is a positive 1. Of course, you multiply, you get a 0. The difference between these two is a positive 2. The difference between these two is a positive 4. Multiply, you get a positive 8. And the difference between those two is a 4. And the difference between these two is a 5. Multiply, you get a 20. Again, we, do, we add all those products together. That's equal to 60 divided by 5. And we get a covariance of 12. Well, it's a positive number, which means that the trends tend to be in the same direction. And is 12 a large number? Well, that's hard to tell because we could be using bigger numbers, different sets of numbers. We really don't have a sense yet of how much of a covariance that is. How much are they related? How much do they have the same trend? The fact that they're positive means that they both increase at the same time or maybe they both decrease at the same time. At least they don't have a situation where one set is increasing while the other set is decreasing because that will give us a negative covariance. But 12 doesn't really mean much. How does that mean? What does that mean compared to another covariance, for example? Well, to get a better sense of that, we have what we call the correlation constant R. So R is a measure of how the trends of two data sets are related. Well, that's the very same definition, except the difference is that we're going to change that so that R will be value between negative 1 and positive 1. If it's really close to positive 1, then there's a very strong relationship between the two data sets. They both increase in the very same manner. If it's close to negative 1, well, that means that one increases while the other one decreases in a very similar fashion, but, of course, in the opposite direction. So, let's do the correlation for these two data sets. We had a covariance of 12. Now, when we do the covariance, and we divide the covariance, which we found to be 12, divided by the square root of the variance in x and the square root of the variance in y. So, let me write it like this. So, r is equal to the covariance of x and y, the two data sets, divided by the square root of the variance of the x data set times the square root of the variance of the y data set. Notice when we take the square root of s squared, we get s, the square root of s squared, we get s. So, let's go back and see what the two variances were. For the x data set, it was 8. For the y data set, it was 18.8. .8. So, we're going to divide the covariance by the square root of the variance of the x data set and the square root of the variance of the y data set and we get 0 0.98 a number between negative 1 and 1 that's what we wanted since it is really close to 1 that means there's a very strong relationship between the two data sets so let's take a look at them 2 4 6 8 10 1 3 8 11 12 so they both increase not exactly the same way, 
But notice the difference between the first and the last number is 8. Here the difference between the first and the last number is 11. And notice that these increase by 2, these, this increases by 2, by 5, by 3, by 1. So the increases are roughly the same. The beginning and end number are very close to one another. And so therefore, they're very similar in their trend, in the value of their numbers. And therefore, we see that we have a correlation close to one, meaning there's a very strong relation between the two. It was hard to tell when we looked at the covariance number. But obviously, in order to find the correlation number, we need to find the covariance number first and then kind of normalize it so that it's between plus one and negative one, get a feel of how strong the relationship is between the two data sets. Anyway, at this point, that gives you a very good insight into what we mean by the variance, by the covariance, and by the correlation. And that is how it's done. You were fiddling with the camera. What were you doing? I accidentally bumped it. Oh. Oh, it just shook a little bit. Oh, okay. That's no big deal.